Welcome back to Measurement Studio. So today I want to take a look at here how we can create a HDR from a Maya scene. So I had an old uh, scene hanging around that I prepped up. So I think it's from a light challenge back in the day. So we see here it's a kitchen. So yeah, let's take a look how we can create an HDR to use for lighting like this without actually having the whole complete environment. If you want to do something like that so yeah okay let's jump into it now so here's the scene that i prepped here so i applied like basic shaders random shaders to like copper brass different type of materials and we also have a checkerboard floor and, and stuff like that i populated this with the random and lights here we can see here we have a different uh, spherical lights so i set the color temperature so if, if you want to go back to uh, looking into how to create lights i have a separate video that i link now up in the description so i have temperature i varied a bit so like 3000 4000 there's a light here as well and i have like poles just to give some kind of shadows but we also have uh, actually lights that if i go up here all of these lights have uh, geo lights on it so yeah that's uh, the setup for this and let's actually just fire off the render here and to see how it looks here from this so this is the basic setup that i will want to then create an hdr like a spherical HDR so I can use an environment light instead of the whole scene here. That's the setup, so I place a camera somewhere, so let's do that. Okay, so my camera here is always set up, but um, I'm gonna do it from scratch to actually create a new one so we can see, because you have to add uh, something to actually render a spherical camera. By default, it's gonna render uh, like a regular, like a lens would, but uh, we have some special techniques here as well. So first create a camera, create camera. So we're gonna have camera two here. Locate to scale 10, 20, so we see it. So let's say that we wanna place it. The direction doesn't really matter when you wanna render a spherical, but let's say that we wanna focus this direction and look through it. Camera two, so this is the direction. And uh, if we go here on the render man and go to enable camera projection here on the render man and the camera projection plugin and right click, we're gonna get a few options here. So I want to have Pixar sphere camera. So let's take a look at what that gives us. So we have horizontal sweep and vertical sweep. So this is gonna be a sphere. So if I now actually render through this camera here, it's gonna start to look very strange here. Um, we take this camera, look through it and hit render in render man, rendering the whole room now, except the, the roof that I hid there. So that's a way to uh, create an HDR kind of. So what you do, you render out this image as floating point EXR and then you will have an HDR that you can map to your environment light. Let's go back there. We can look at the other ones as well just to see what they do. To see here if I break connection and take omnidirectional stereo. So that's going to be uh, if you want to do a stereo pro uh, project. I have a I tested that. I actually have one of those on my YouTube channel. So break connection. See here, cylinder camera. Let's see what that one does just out of the bat. So it's gonna be like a cylinder projection. That's freaky. Light probe. So light probe is something back in the day when Paul DeBavec was doing HDR stuff. We used uh, this kind of projections on actually uh, chrome balls from two different directions to uh, stitch an HDR together. So that's kind of the technique this one mimics. I'm not sure really what to apply light probes on to today other than making cool images like this. Panini. I'm not really sure what that one does actually. I usually use the sphere one. I have to look into this to be honest. But yeah, uh, it was the HDR and, uh, and that's uh, the sphere one. So what I do actually when I render it out, you have to render it square to capture both um, the whole scene. So generally when you get an HDR, you will have it like 
2048 wide and 10, uh, 24 high. But uh, to render that, it, it, that's gonna crop it. So you have to render it square and then uh, when you convert it to TEX, you say it is gonna be a lat long image and that maps it correctly. Let's take this with the viewport, set it to a square. Let's take something that's gonna be fast to render now, just as a preview to proof that the square one and let's render it to using this one and there you go start to render so what i did i was i rendered this out uh, with the ceiling of course so i have that one so um and then i run this through tx make do that as well so we have this one if i would say pick this image go to hey this one hdr image EXR, open this. So what you do is you select it, go to uh, from texture type, say environment map and hit apply. And that's gonna make the, the TX file uh, behave as a environment map. So when once this is converted, you just can use make a new scene here. Take this sphere one here and go to color map. So this one is pre-converted from uh, my texture that I rendered and this is what you get and to be able to render to float what you do here I think it's half by default uh, so uh, by this you want to go to AOV's beauty this one type from half to float this one is now is going to be 32-bit float exr out so that's important if you want to render a uh, like the full dynamic range of the scene i set this to float and render it out as an exr and yeah that's kind of it how you add a um, like a scene into an hdr image that you can then use to render with using an environment light so Let's create a sphere here to prove that this works. And let's create a ball uh, reflection. And to prove that we have dynamic range, let's take the exposure and go down there so you can see we have dynamic range from the light. We have this one is probably hottest, this light over there. Uh, or reflection, maybe it is. Yeah. So you see, it works and um, yeah, everything fine and dandy. So yeah, if you want to uh, stay up to date with my channel, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything when I go live or do one of these tutorials. Yeah, see you on the channel. Bye bye.